tuned in to Athletics Double LC yeah, 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 yeah. with Lamar, uh -huh. Lucius, uh -huh. Big League Chu, yeah. and my man Clyde. <laughs> you are about to be schooled in all things track and field. This is experience. Yes, sir. We are talking past, past present, present, future. future. Y'all listen up. Let's go. Hi, everyone. Happy conference week. Woo! Conference, conference, conference. Burr, 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 burr. So anyhow, that's my celebration to championships weeks there. Um, if you had it already, I hope you had a good time. Glad you made it back uh, for competing this weekend, like two of the four screens. <sighs> Get us through this weekend. <laughs> that's all I gotta say. Get us through this weekend. <laughs> um, good luck. I, yeah, wow. So anyhow, if you haven't figured out what show you're on, you know, here's your clue right now. Athletics LLC, it's the place to be. That rhymed. That was dope. <laughs> Are you cool, chilling, rhyme illin on the MIC? So let me go ahead and introduce the tiles that are with me tonight and get off my pedestal. Um, just below me, I don't know what you see, but below me, I have Clyde. How are you doing tonight, sir? Very well. New location, you know. Right? I, I think I missed the memo. I should have just changed the background. I was a week or two weeks ahead of time. So dang it. I, I think Clyde is in the shade room. Oh my gosh. Anyhow, Sir Lucius, how are you, sir? I am absolutely wonderful. Excellent. Excellent. Ready to serve fire, I'm sure. Absolutely. <laughs> Last but not least, Dude X from San Antonio. <laughs> Good evening, all. We are ready to rumble tonight. Shout out to all the San Antonians, San Antonians who got their uh, power, lights, water, and everything else back finally. You know what's really funny, too? I never actually see his names. I know they're there. And then you say them. <laughs> and I'm like, damn it, it does say that. <laughs> like, it always catches me off guard. <laughs> Oh my god! I always have to take a deep breath so I can get it all out smoothly, and I try as smooth as I can. But then, like that Bay Area reading courses, they don't work so well. So I'm like, dang it! I'm a, I'm gonna mess things up one one week. I'm just gonna be Lamar. <laughs> Anyhow, all right. So let's talk about why we're here. Track is back. See, this is why I don't sing. Um, but. Mm. Track is back, and ooh-wee, did we see some things, specifically in our most recent past. Is that what it is? Yeah. Uh, but definitely this past weekend, we saw some good stuff, too. Uh, so who would like to start us off? Who's, who, who's going to talk about the elephant in the room? Um, I, we know he won't. So I, I was about to say, well, we know he won't. Right. So, so let, let's just get into this. Um, just so happens that on the day we are taping this for our audience. Um, just a, a few short hours ago, uh, Mr. Grant Holloway reset uh, the indoor world record, um, 729, uh, a phenomenal race. And I just wanna take the time to say this because I think it's important. There are coaches in our profession that um, shy away from coaching the unicorns. And there are other coaches in our profession who should shy away from coaching unicorns. And, you know, when you get the opportunity to, to deal with one of these just supremely talented human beings, it's easy to, to kind of skate by, take the points, take the trophies, ride it out, take the money. I am thoroughly impressed with the development of what has gone on with Grant Holloway since his arrival in Gainesville and to this point in the world. It, it damn sure isn't easy to do. And the, the Colin Jackson record, most people would, would have considered that one of those, yeah, maybe, but kind of untouchable records. Like I know a lot of people was like, yeah, 60 meters, that one's not going off the books and it's been on there for a really, really long time. 
And Grant's been flirting with it for a really long time. So, you know, to, to see him bust through and get it, stand in ovation, bravo to coach and athlete, well-deserved. And, you know, I'm not too sure how many people could have actually pulled that off with, with that particular talent. So, bravo, sir. Bravo. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. You know, um, when, 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 I, go ahead. I'm I want to piggyback before you, before, before you, you speak to that. Um, not to be um, redundant, but what shouldn't be missed on is, is Grant's 732 semi, um, which I'm pretty sure is a world record for a non-championship final. Um, and and I, the reason I mention it is because to Clyde's point, there were adjustments made from round one to round two. Um, and I know how those adjustments were conveyed and coaching is coaching. And, and to Clyde's point, I think a great number of people would be afraid to make changes or adjustments with somebody that talented. And at the end of the day, that's why a good number of people who are truly talented don't get to the best that they can be is because unfortunately their coaches are somewhat fearful. Like, well, I don't want to get blamed for, for, for breaking that pristine egg. And the, and the silliness to that is that, look, everybody has to be coached. And uh, I too would, would convey kudos uh, and bravo to Sir Lucius for seeing the young man as pristine clay that still needed to be molded and shaped and directed. And um, if I know the two of them, uh, this is the beginning of great things and by no means the last chapter. So it, I will say this to, to all of you um, young hurl coaches out there, uh, we made it easy for you. Find the race somehow steal it and put it on your on your hard drive and then that that is how you teach the hurdles because it's a uh perfect is the wrong word it's definitely a training video all the things that you need to teach someone to hurdle are, are right there now if they don't seven step deal with that but at the end of the day the rest of it is exactly what you're trying to do um, spacing from the hurdle, spacing off the back end of the hurdle positions, all those things are relatively pristine. And that's kind of why you run 729. Um, you, you can't make a ton of mistakes and run 729, but at the end of the day, um, bravo, kudos to, to Sir Lucius. So we'll, 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 we'll stop doing this to you. Please go ahead and say what you were going to say, sir. Well, I'm just going to say thank you. Um, and, you know, kudos to Grant for, for his trust. I mean, I think you guys all understand that nothing like this happens without trust and belief amongst the coach and the athlete. And during the recruiting process, I, I do a chart. Uh, I call it a pathway to success. And the pathway showed that Grant was going to run 735 his junior year and break the American record and collegiate record. And uh, which, which he, we had predicted him to break the collegiate record the year before. And I remember when I wrote the number down, I was like, wow, 735, that's fast, right? <laughs> you know? And then when he got here and I showed it to him, he's like, coach, that's, that's fast, you know? And then when we started through the process, I started to realize after about, honestly, about six months, I'm like, this dude's going to be really special. And 735 is not going to be a problem. And I, I told him at the beginning of this year, I didn't want to, we didn't want to focus on the world record. We wanted to focus on, honestly, I'm trying to set him up to be ready to be great outdoors because that's where his true greatness will be shown in this world. I mean, don't get me wrong, very proud, very incredibly pleased. I know there was a conversation about what grade he was going to get and I'm giving him an A and I'm going to leave it there because like you can't minus anything that has a world record behind it. So he, he gets- He an got A. an A. Wow. Has to be Congratulations yeah. to Flamingo. Because yeah. I, I, I was right. flirting with that, that minus first, thing. I'm like, it's a world record. You can't, you can't minus. I, I think that I think that maybe Flamingo's second A. Uh, exactly. In, second one. Yeah. It's his second A in in uh, what, are we at four years now? 
Five. Four second A in five years. Congratulations, Flamingo. <laughs> now, you know, now, so you know, just to, to, to put it to put a to put a cap on that conversation, I'm just uh I mean, I'm just blessed to have a guy that that trusts me and believes in what I ask him to do. And, and like you said, you know, the, the video was 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 crazy. And I and I just sent you guys this stat because somebody just sent it to me. Yeah, like, that's ridiculous. Like he has not lost a race over 42 inch barriers indoors. He's run 21 prelims, 20 finals, 41 wins. I was I was gonna ask you if the Twitter stat was real, so I'm glad you got it's, that in. It's real, I'm definitely coming. It's real. Yeah, like somebody literally sent that to me while we were right here, and then like the other thing is that in his just in his 10 races this year, um, under you know, um, this year during the, this year indoor season, he's eight of them were sub 740. I didn't know he ran. I didn't know he ran any of those seven forty. I missed I mean, two. He had, he had a meet. His second meet in the series, he one. ran. Yeah, he ran. He ran seven forty seven and seven forty one. Yeah, the one he run other races. One oh, of I bet meets. he got. I bet he got D's for those. Actually, no, he got a B minus because he was tired. Let's see. Okay. He was tired. Under, yeah, under he, he's, he's gotten a couple of D's, but not, not for that one. <laughs> and, that. Can, can we take one more second and, and stay there for a second? Because I think people really need to understand that. We're talking about since the day he became a collegiate. Correct. This moment right now, the boy is 41-0 and 0 in 60-meter hurdle race. Which to not take an L as a freshman is insanity. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well anyway i mean as a freshman in the sec is that can you compound that even beyond that like hey, it, don't get do not like get clyde started don't get started. <laughs> started. we'll just leave it as freshmen and we'll stop right there exactly yeah exactly. well mo moving on to other greatness uh from not, i mean that's the height of it but right. there was there was a lot of there was a lot of good stuff this past weekend um you know, I, I think something that, that got the uh, the most attention and, and deservedly so is it was the return of Allison Felix. Yes, he looked, he looked very, very yes. good. Yes, yes. He, people want to. Did get anybody out. else peep her last twenty meters of that sixty? Right. See, everybody yes. wants to pay attention, and everybody wants to say, "Oh, but she got she got lit up in a sixty. I'm like, no. Of course, she got her Allison start does. is awful. Right. We know Allison that. Don't start, but her forty to sixty was phenomenal what? and that 200 listen she doesn't run the 200 at all indoors you know what, what was the stat I, I think it was the second time in 18 years or something like something that something like that yeah yeah and to step out there and and be be standing by only behind sean a I, I think it is right now i mean that's listen yeah. that, that was very impressive it was, it was very very impressive so everybody, she's back it was a concerned with what was that what Allison had going on needs to uh, recalibrate and, <laughs> and and I'll say this right now I'll, I'm one of those people I don't know what the plan is moving forward but knowing Allison knowing Bobby watching what I just watched and I, I don't think she's gonna play in the 400 I don't think she's gonna play it at all I think she just wants to go out the way she came in, you know, in her quote unquote baby event, as, as she calls it. Yeah. And just, and just try to take the 200 meter gold and, and, and bow out. Cause I mean, it is her last Olympics. So yeah, I, after seeing that, I don't, I don't know. If she, I don't know if she's going to go play in that 400 game or not. Well, see, and here's, well, here's the craziest I'll part of, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead Lucia. What I'll say to you is this, is that if she decides to play in the 400, that's a problem because of what she did, you know, so, you know, and no Sean A. If she's with Bobby, she's she's crazy strong, and mm -hmm. if she's got that kind of speed, then then maybe, yeah, that could that could get interesting, you know. And I want I want to say this: we we talked about this on the show, uh, like three weeks or so ago. We're all the white sprinters. Well, they showed up this weekend. <laughs> they did. did they? What two of the six? Did you know? they? The, like my, my man Devin Queen at run 653 a, a, a couple of weeks ago, and then we had a 58 to 59 this weekend. We had a high school kid run 2080 in the in the uh, 200. Yeah, so yeah, they showed up this weekend. 
and, and you know what? I, I don't, I, honestly, I'm not even being funny. I don't know who those two guys were in the 60 at the ATL. I, I've never heard of their names before. I felt really bad for the dude who won it and apparently and heard them going across the line. Like that, that was kind of tough to watch. It was tough yeah. to watch. Yeah. It, 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 it felt like he had some kind of breakthrough for himself and then the ramp got him like that. That, yeah. that, that was tough. If you, I mean, if you watch the race closely, I think he hurt himself before he got to the, the ramp. He, he, hurt, he hurt himself right, right like in the last step or so of the 60, but then he yeah. had to take the ramp with a broken wheel. Yeah. Which just that's made it worse. That's what got a little bit like, so yeah, there's your white sprinters we were looking for. <laughs> <laughs> we they're, they're, they're there, yeah. Maybe they maybe they heard us and they said, okay, we'll we'll show you. I think the young man that won it, I, I can't remember his name, but I'll look him up here real quick. But I believe he was a big 12 champion last big, year. Big 12 champ. I'm not mistaken. I think so, we all like I think so many people flew under the radar last year because you know the the takeaway from last year's season was it ended. <laughs> Right, but I I, be, I believe he was Big Twelve Zachary, champ. Zachary Jewell, yeah, Zachary Jewell, yeah. And then Jack, I don't Jack. I've never Zachary heard of Jackson yeah. Webb. I don't know, but they were rolling. They looked good. They they and they they looked good doing it. Um, I want to send a, a very, I guess, interesting shout out. And I will say this: R Ryan Krauser is a boss. Um, yeah. Look, for those of you who've never had food poisoning, um, look, it's no, it's literally nothing to play with. And when you're that large and you eat 5,000 calorie meals to lose 14 pounds in nine hours, obviously you're not putting any energy in and the dude still threw over 71 feet like four times, yeah, no one filled up a trip filled up a trash can during the meet and I was like you know what this dude is a soldier and I'll say again I'm never really one of those to predict predict records but I'm gonna say this Ryan Krauser is going to do some ridiculous things outdoors well you know what to, to that point I was very impressed with his ability to go out there and do that under those conditions but honestly yeah. I didn't even care about the throws. It, what was most impressive to me was he was willing to go out there and do that. For yes. No, for no yes. reason other than it was good for the sport in that moment. Yes. Because yep. uh, clearly he has nothing to prove. Clearly there was nobody at that competition that was any kind of comp for him. I mean, he's chucking in between throws and still <laughs> dominating the competition. He did that. And did, did the interview too. Right, yeah. did that purely because it was good for the sport. And if more of our top pros had that kind of mentality and attitude about what's good for the sport, everything would be better because of it. So if anything, props to Ryan Krauser for that. Speaking of mentalities, uh, shout out to Marquise Dendy for challenging the entire world and then showing up to take on all challengers that decided to show up. And winning the meet in a in a bounce at eight nineteen on his last jump, like you know, like look, Marquis Dendy. I mean, look, people need to remember he was hurt in a potentially career-ending injury last year, and that dude has come back from the injury and is about it. So he's another one that I am severely rooting for and looking forward to. Um, a healthy and dominating outdoor season because I think that dude is going to do damage. Yeah, and I, I want to give a big shout out to Chris Johnson and uh, oh, Shamir, girl, Shamir Little, you know, and you know, and I, I'm gonna say this, and I don't care who think, but we we get all excited because people coach people to get close to their PBs. And we want to anoint them as the best coach on the planet. Shamir PR by over half a freaking second. Yep. And, and that's, that's a problem. And that's not her event. For, exactly. For, for the novice, 400 yeah. is not what she does. No. And so when she gets that kind of strong and fast, the 400 hurdles, yeah, we got triplets coming. That's us put it like that. <laughs> we got triplets. So, and, you know, shout out to him. And, you know, so when we're out there tooting people's horns, they'll start tooting that horn for me because that was a phenomenal coaching and athlete production right there.
it, it was so Shamir was so good in the 400. And, and I don't know Shamir that well. I don't really know Chris that well. But she was so good in the 400. They could sit down as a team and justify going up, going after the open four straight up. For sure. Like you, you could really make that case right now. Because mm-hmm. in the on the women's side and Amer- on the American side, the open 400 is a complete open book right now. Whereas the 400 hurdles, you're dealing with world record holder who didn't get the record and the other world record holder who has it. They're all in their prime. And Shamir could easily run that fast. Yes. Like that's a dog fight. And the women's straight up four is a big question mark. So I'm I'm interested to see what happens moving forward. I mean, look, very, very, I wouldn't even say quietly because we saw every single meet she was in, like Shamir PR'd in everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, she PR'd in the two, she PR'd in the four, she PR'd in the three. Uh, <laughs> hey, anybody want to guess that, that we think she's going to PR in the four in a hurdle when she goes outside? It's hey, going. And, and you know what? <laughs> I'm going to throw in something else with that because the meet before that, the, the ATL prior, I think it was, she was chasing Shawnee Miller around the track. And, and, let, mm-hmm. and let's, let's just be real about it. Shawnee put it on her and everybody else in that race. It wasn't close. For her to take that L and come back and deliver that performance by herself, like that's the kind of stuff you want to see from athletes. You could tell she was running with a purpose. She was like, yeah, okay, I took that L, but I'm not that person. I'm better than that. And I was in that race. Because mm-hmm. she ran that 50.5 solo. Yes. Totally solo. Like you said, on a mission. Um, and, you know, for those of us who know Chris and Shamir, yeah, it'd be easy for them to say, well, let's go attack the 400. But I think it's more likely they might try to make both teams versus, <laughs> versus just yeah. not, like, you know. Hey. No, no one, Chris, Chris is like, hey, if y'all give me the right time schedule, I might try to make both. <laughs> and and uh, and we got so many more people that that we could shout out, but but two that I I really need to shout out because it's one of my favorite events. Um, I was very very impressed with with the way Danielle Williams and Tonia Marshall yes. looked at the hurdles. Yes, I, not because they ran the you know the top two times in the world because they didn't even though they were very very close. People may not realize Tonia still has. NCAA eligibility outdoors for LSU mm-hmm. and given all the context that this year is that has to be a weird thing to try to pull off you're not racing for your school right now so you're out there you know doing your thing with your with your uh, with your high school coach at these meets going back and forth to different locations having to find a way to get your meets in and then Danielle who doesn't really run indoors too often you know, she's a Jamaican, she trains down there in Clemson with Lance Graham, one of the best hurdle coaches in the world, by the way, doesn't get enough credit. Okay. Danielle looked amazing. Tania looked amazing. And it was a phenomenal race. The way Danielle kept her poise, came back and, and ran her down right at the line. That That's the Danielle Williams that, that those of us who really pay attention know can challenge that world record when she's right. And she looks great. Don't worry about her limping after the race because of plantar fasciitis. Danielle looked great. And, you know, I'm, I'm very excited to watch her, both of them, moving forward. Um, speaking of, I have to, I want to throw this in there. The two gentlemen of the NCAA eligibility, the two gentlemen that we highlighted that won the 60 and came in second, both have eligibility as well. Um, Zach, oh, runs, wow. Zach runs for Central Arkansas. And Jackson runs for OU. Central Arkansas. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, well, there it is. Right. And so they both, you know, they're still on their rosters. They're on their 2021s. And, you know, kudos to their coaches as well. And whatever they've been able to do to get this to work for them and whatnot. So highlighting all of that. Because that's, it's very, I'm not dealing with it. But seeing it from the outside looking in those student athletes and those coaches who are making most of this year that they've gotten back, you know, mm-hmm. it's good I think, stuff. You know, there's, there was also some very good stuff that happened, you know, from the other world tours. There was a young lady, uh, God, I can't think of her name right now, Visser, I think. She Visser. ran 781 today. You know, Christina yep. Clemens had run 781 good. last week to set the world best, and she came back to tie it. Um, you know, there's this young man that ran, what, I think he ran 143, on the 800 last week, there's been a lot of, you know, 
great performances. It just it just kind of snowballed all of a sudden. And mm-hmm. I, you know, we've, you know, and even people that are running second, getting second and third in these races are running, you know, big personal bests. So I think that, you know, the, the term you use to begin this segment of track is back. It is absolutely back. And it's, it's, uh, you know, the high school kid, you can't forget him. You know, he almost falls oh, out of the blocks and breaks his neck and hey. breaks out the national high school record. You know, so he runs 2062. You know, was totally caught off guard by that, you know. So you know, just a lot of great performances out there all across the board. And I want to give a shout out. I know it's kind of a homer thing, but, you know, the thing, there's only like three or four guys in the long jump. So then he took all six of his jumps in about 25 minutes. So that was, <laughs> he, wasn't, he wasn't real happy about that. So. No, look, 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 props to Dendy for doing what he did and throwing out the challenge. Everybody else in the long jump that, that has a name, you, you ain't looking great right now. <laughs> somebody somebody should have showed up. Yeah. Somebody should have showed up and challenged that man. The man said pull up. Should have pulled up. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, it's funny that you that 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 Nadine uh, Visser read seven eighty one. She used to be a multi. <laughs> yeah. Go get them, kid. <laughs> hey, it's it's the women's sprint hurdles. It's still the coldest game on the planet. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No mercy. <laughs> Gunslingers. Yes. <laughs> Um, so let's talk about something that was somewhat international and now has become a domestic to us. Um, Wade Van Niekerk and his his move. So, I mean, as everybody kind of just sits and ponders this and everyone has their little explanations and and I haven't seen anything come out of the camp of the new or the old about reasoning, but, and I don't know who has the ins and the intel and whatnot, but you know, how, how will the relocation, the, the assignment potentially affect him as well as the landscape of the four going into Tokyo? Well, uh, I'll go first. Okay. You, <laughs> you know, know what? what? Of oh, all phase two, uh, right. Sir Lucius. So, so, so what I'm going to say is this, is that, okay, I've been doing this a long time. And, okay, we have no clue, Ashley, what's going on. But clearly everything wasn't right with what he was doing or he wouldn't have moved. So let just start right there. Okay, so I don't know if he had a fallout with his coach or what, if he didn't think it was working. But for some reason, the panic button was pushed and we decided to move. Um, now, if I'm his new coach, Lance Brown, I got a problem because if he don't run 42-9, it didn't work. You know, you know how you know how the track and field community is, right? If he doesn't win the gold medal, it didn't work. You know, he could get the silver and run forty three oh nine, and uh, didn't get better. You know, um, I, I always caution, I always find it interesting when people change coaches in Olympic year. It's always interesting to me. Um, I don't know of a quarter mile in that group that helps him if he's weighed because I don't, there's nobody there that can do the things that he does. Now, if he's going to, to delve a little more in the, in the 200, obviously there's no one there, you know. But I think it's an interesting move. Um, it's a very interesting time to make the move. But for those who are trying to ponder why or why not, I mean, honestly, if things were 4303 Wade, he wouldn't be in Orlando now. My thoughts on that. Uh, 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 okay. <laughs> This is, I'm going to try to be as clear and as fair as I can be. I've never met Wade Van Niekirk. I don't know him at all. I am a big fan, very big fan. I've met Lance Brom and I know him decently. Got a lot of respect for Lance. He's one of the best in the world at what he does. And I don't like this. I don't like it at all. I don't know why none of us really could. It feels, to lose just his point, it feels like a panic. It feels like a shoe company move. In the Olympic year, if, if, the, if you tell me this happened last year, I'm like, hey, take a shot. It, it, just, it just feels very lose-lose all the way around. And for the exact reasons that, that Lucius just said. If and, and you know, people have been paying attention. Like Wade's been through some stuff since since his world record. He's been injured. He's had had a surgery, like you know, it's a serious injury. 
So, you know, I'm, I have to believe as a world record holder, as basically a God in his, his, in, in his own country, something pretty serious must be in his mind or on the table for him to walk away from the woman who is in a legend in her own right. And together they produced the greatest 400 meter race in history. So it, it's a lot of context for him to have to pull the trigger on something like that. I just, I'm rooting for the kid, but I don't like it. I'm rooting for Lance, but I don't like it. It, it feels like a lose, lose all the way around. As far as what it does to the landscape of the event, I mean, that's to be determined, right? Because if, if Lance can get him right, well, then it makes that event all that much harder because Wade hasn't been relevant in that event for the past three years. So putting the, the, the greatest ever back at a place where he could get a medal or re-break his record is a problem for everybody. But if it doesn't work, it doesn't change the event at all. It just is an interesting news story that we can all, you know, do crap like this about and pontificate about. But, but until he goes out there and puts down some performances, it don't mean anything. Yet, I'm rooting for it. And I don't know. Well, I, I'll just cut right to the chase. Uh, history is the greatest predictor of our future. And at the end of the day, there is not an Olympic gold medalist in the 400 or the 400 hurdles who has changed coaches after said gold medal and had equal success. There is also not a world record holder who has changed coaches after setting said world record in the 400 or 400 hurdles who has achieved previous success. Now, the unfortunate part is I get coming back from a major injury is a huge part of this in some way. I don't know exactly how, but it's definitely part of it. I also get being the gold medalist in a country like South Africa also would make training and coming back from an injury very, very difficult. Um, so I think there's some issues there, both real and imagined. I think the bigger one, the bigger issue to me, like the thing that scares me the most about all of this is it's one thing, and I think a crazy thing to do to, to change coaches in an Olympic year, meaning prior to, and you start the fall with a new coach. Right. It's a whole nother thing to change hemispheres and climates in the middle of the season, right? The fall is gone, no matter what hemisphere you're in. And changing coaches in January of an Olympic year is unprecedented when you add that it's a, it's been it's coming off of a pandemic year so we don't even really know what was in the tank in general look i hope it works because i don't root for anybody's failure it just if it doesn't there are there's a multitude of things that you could point to as to like predictors for the fact that it wasn't going to work um, and I think the other half of the question that I think we all should now address is like, how is it going to change the landscape? I think that's a simple one from my perspective. Um, I think the 400 is wide open. Like wide open. I think the Vegas Gardner would disagree with you, but well, I mean, that's <laughs> great. Right. But, and look, I don't, I don't think there's any doubt, you know, if, the, if Vegas had odds on these things at this point, given the move, Stevie Gardner would be the favorite. But that changes the landscape too, because now you're talking about somebody being in a being a favorite for a, for an Olympic championship who's never won one, right? Like there's there's no question in my mind that that the men's 400 at this point, like you know, it, today in February is a pick'em. There's about there's about five people that you could make a compelling argument as to like why they're going to win the gold medal in you July. Stop it. <laughs> okay. By five, I mean five. Five. See what see what you did? Now you got to like it. Hey, oh, like appreciate it. Can we hear the five? No. Thanks. See? See? You ain't going to give us the five? Because he can't. Because he can't give you the five. 
That's why. Really? I'm trying to agree with you. I think, like, what did you say he was pontificating? Is that what you said he was doing? <laughs> oh, I mean, there's, there's a certain level of hyperbole. Five is probably three. <laughs> a certain level? A great level of hyperbole? So you're you're backtracking without even trying to give us the five? <laughs> I mean, I could give you five, but why do that? The point that I'm well, trying to make is- Why do it because you is, put it out there. You said there's at least five people that you could- You didn't say an argument. You said a great argument. He did. I, I, I do believe that there is a pretty substantial argument for a great number of people. Now, now, well, now it's a great, great number. number. Now it's not five. It's a great number. F that Great number equals five. Is that what you want me to say? I mean, I said no, five. We want you to give us five names. We want you to do. Out here on the West Coast, great number sounds like more than five to me. <laughs> exactly. I mean, you know, maybe. Okay, I don't care. Look, I don't care what hemisphere you're in. Okay. Stevie. Five. Okay. Stevie. McQuala. Oh, okay. A great argument. Great <laughs> argument. Hey, hey, hold on, hold on. Absolutely. Let, let him get the five. Van, McQuala. Van Niekirk. Three. Right. Fred Curley. Or, am I right? I mean, assu assuming that assuming that he's back and healthy, um, I, I think the young man from Grenada is always an issue. You didn't mention wow. your boy. Oh, yeah, wow. What do you mean I didn't mention my boy? You So you Michael went black deep and didn't even- Oh, I'm sorry. I, I thought I said Mikey first. No, you most definitely did not say him at all. <laughs> Look, I said it in my head. And I Mikey said, and was you know, my first I, I, name. I'm going to tell you, that was a good list, but this great argument stuff, yeah, I, I can't because because see all of every one of those falls under the same argument you made about Steve. You're gonna make one of them the favorite, and they never won one. That was my point. I said they, 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 that was the whole point. Is that it, it, it's a it's a complete pick 'em race. Okay, like look, you can, okay. depending on where you're from, you believe that your guy is gonna win. That's my point. Because you are delusional. You you actually helped prove my point. But that's why no, I did continue because I can't, I can't make a great argument for any of those. So <laughs> except for Steve, you threw the box one in there. Exactly. Yeah, that was that was a big. Y'all act like dude is trash. Then, but you act like he's going to win the Olympic title. That's what the problem is. We didn't say he was trash. We just said he's not winning the Olympic title. Right. Uh, okay. The solid. Well, then, what, what you did though, you did a very good job of showing us your wealth of knowledge when it comes to certain things. And I, I appreciate that. I did. I really did. Man, the that was the most. Can be so tough. <laughs> That's this. I that mean, was very backhanded. <laughs> look, let, let's be clear. Very like, all, all jokes aside. Okay, okay. All, jokes all jokes aside. aside. All jokes aside. I, I name I named five guys plus Mikey that have run forty three seconds in the last eighteen months, twenty months. No, you did not. Did you? No, you did. Okay. Who am I missing? 18 months, that's their first problem. Right. Yeah, that, that's definitely untrue. <laughs> All of those cats did not run eight, that fast in 2019 because none of them ran that fast in 2020. I think the only one that didn't run 43 seconds in, in, 2019, in 2019 or 2020, well, obviously nobody in 2020, is uh, uh, the Grenadian who's been sick. Well, he, he, ran, he actually did run in 2019. Right. He ran 43 high. But he did. The, no, no, he ran 44 low. He Mark, ran 44 low. Right. Yeah, the other one did. Mark Walla, whatever his name is, he didn't run 43 seconds in time. Walla didn't. In 19. And obviously Wade didn't. Exactly. Mikey did, and you left Mikey off the list. <laughs> okay, we Mikey gave was you first Mikey on my list, list, like Mikey I said. Mikey and Stevie, the only ones you on your list that ran 43 seconds in the last 18 months. Okay, do y'all want to make arguments about my list, or y'all want to no. respect no, the fact no, that I gave y'all five like legitimate names? No, no, I, I look, didn't I just give you credit for giving me the, the names? No, I'm taking a shot at the water sipper over there that's trying to talk trash. <laughs> I'm going to say, I gave you credit. Look, look, I, look I've been telling you this for years. You are you can at some at times be an endless supply of useless information. Those five or six names was an example of that. So. Fair enough. <laughs> so, so according, I'm looking at the World Athletics page. Oh my Fred, God, this is about to be so bad for me. Fred Curley, Stephen Gardner, and Michael Norman ran the slowest time being 43.64, and that was okay. in 2019. Right. Okay. Two and then done. You're done. Two of them. <laughs> okay. That's not a waste anymore of big league's time because you're done. That's fair. 
So I was off by a little bit. So we can be done with Wade and his relocation. What, what yeah, that's the only. Those are the only and, three. And, in the X, the dude in Dude X, that's your name tonight, Dude X. Correct. <laughs> we love your enthusiasm. Wait, wait, you know what? Right here, right now, today, who's gonna win the Who's gonna win the men's four hundred at the Olympic Games? Didn't we do that? Didn't we play that game already? Once? Pick, pick a person today. Stevie Gardner. Stephen Gardner. Wow, man, you guys are all on the Stevie Gardner bandwagon well, i like well, it listen well, why is it why is it a bandwagon you asked me my opinion i i did i, I just said i was surprised when's I'm, the okay i'm gonna give you when's the last time bit. these two I'm agreed on anything more. i'm gonna give you a little more <laughs> because lucia said stephen gardner unequivocally and I, he believes that i'm saying stephen gardner unequivocally because i do not believe for a second that michael norman is going to pursue the 400 i don't care what he said in the interview I don't care what the team Norman says. I don't buy it. I think he's going to run the one. All right. I'll pick Michael Norman. Uh, you, the five, now you're picking him to win? Will you stop when I didn't pick him with the five? Give me a break. But he's, he's going to run the 400. Clyde, he is. I'll buy it. Okay. He's going to run the four. Right. I'm happy to be wrong. I'll buy it. I love it. He's going to four. Big league, big league, you going to pick a winner? No, because I'm I'm too busy fact checking right now. I'm looking at my old notebook. Fred Curley, don't don't you know how this game is played? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Big League is picking Fred Curley in for the win. No, no, you're bad. He was a reliable relay leg. Okay. Big League's got Michael Johnson for the W. <laughs> come on, come on now. I'm, All right, I'm sorry. All right, y'all get y'all get off my girl. What's next? What's next? Yeah, back up. I'm intimidating the people nowadays, you know. I was. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> oh my Gina. Okay, so moving on, talking about where all these competitions happen to take place, or some of them took place. Um, the ATLs wrapped up its indoor series of meets. So, what do we think should be the next step in the evolution and the continuation of the ATL? Uh, I'll, I'll jump in on that. Um, I, I think at this point, we would all agree that whatever uh, Mr. Doyle has up his sleeve, he has earned our trust and respect. So whatever he's got coming, we'll rock with him on it. If we're asking what, what we would like to see, I would like to see an, another American series of meets. Um, I think indoors, the centralized location of Arkansas works brilliantly. Outdoors, I think you could do something like that. And if you did, I would, lo I would love to see Mount San Antonio College, AKA Mount SAC, be, be the hub location for that. But I don't think outdoors that works as well. So what I'm hoping to see is a four to five meet schedule um, one at Oregon, two at Mount Sac, and two down south. Though I don't know exactly what locations would play well on TV. And that's the issue. Indoors, Arkansas, you get the banners in there. It looks spectacular on television. There are a lot of really nice venues outdoors that won't necessarily look amazing on TV, especially if there's no fans. So Mount Sac, I've been there. It would, it would look spectacular regardless. And then of course the cathedral is the cathedral, but I'd like to see four, four or five meets, LA, LA, Oregon, and two more down South somewhere in venues that would, that would play well on television. Um, I, I wanna agree with you, but disagree with you a little bit. Um, one, I think that again, what it, Paul, what Paul did was phenomenal. And like you said, we trust him and whatever he does with the indoor series, we, we got to get, we got to stay involved with that. Um, as far as the outdoors goes, I, I think you just got to pick venues where they're able to host it, especially during this, this you know, this crisis we, we continue to be in. And I'm not so much looking at the, at the, the fluff that goes around it. As long as we have great performances, I think it'll be okay. 
you know, I think the background and what it looks like won't be as big of a deal if your performances are as hot as they were in Arkansas. Because as good, as nice of a facility as Arkansas is, if there's crappy performances, nobody cares. You know, so then I'm, I'm gonna go, I wanna rock with you on the fact that we need four, five, six meets outdoors as well. But then I'm gonna go Marquis Denny, you know, you guys, y'all got, y'all gotta pull up, man. Y'all gotta show up, you gotta compete, you gotta get at each other, you know, you gotta get some fire, you gotta get some excitement around this thing, because that's the only way it's gonna work. But when you got people, you know, I'm, uh, I don't wanna do that yet, I don't wanna do this, well then, hey, be ready to do it. And understand that sometimes you gotta spend a little money and make money. And this whole thing of, well, you know, I don't wanna raise because it's gonna cost me $1,000, okay? But if it's gonna cost you a thousand now, make you 20 or 30 later, you need to think about that. You know, so I agree, we need to have four, five, six meets outdoors. Honestly, I don't care where they are, as long as, as Mr. Dindy so eloquently said, people pull up and get after each other. I think that if you do that, you'll be fine. Yeah, I mean, I I, I agree with that. I, I think the, the most important things that have to happen is for one, we, we have to have four or five meets. For two, they have to be on television again. Um, and look, I, again, I'm going to say this. Kudos to Paul for that. For getting the meets on television live. Whew. So if we can get another four or five meets done and have them be live and on, and on ESPN, you're excuse my language, batshit crazy if you're healthy and you, and you don't compete in those meets. Like that to me is craziness. So, you know, all the coaches, all the managers, all, all the athletes be on notice. Like, look, if, if, if 10 days from, from the meet, you find out there's going to be a meet, change what you're going to do and go do it because it will benefit you. Um, anytime Lewis Johnson is talking about you, that's a good thing. It's even better when he's talking to you because that means you won something. So at the end of the day, you know, like big. that's what has to happen. Like we got to stop with this. I don't want to go get beat. Iron sharpens iron, right? If you want to get better, then go run against people that can make you better. Because practicing every day is not always the thing that helps you get better. Because some of the biggest stars in America showed up at some of these meets, you know? And I don't, I don't recall there was a ton of prize money in these days, right? I am here for Fred Curley v. Michael Norman. I want to see it happen as soon as it is humanly possible to happen. Yeah. Cool. And, and, and you know what? This isn't necessarily about Paul, but I think it is about the future of that particular series. Off the track aside from the work that Paul and his crew did to get it on TV and all that stuff. The dopest thing I saw in relation to these meets and the last one was the culmination of it. The sponsorship piece of it. The mm -hmm. first one didn't have a lot of sponsors. The second and third ones had a lot of interesting sponsors, a lot of sponsors that you don't really think about. The last one, people in the sport started putting money into it and putting their money behind it. Coaches Collab sponsored a meet. Uh, Bianca Knight uh, was a BK Track Stars, an app sponsored a meet. Tiana Bartoletta sponsored uh, uh, one of the races based on the memoir that she has coming out. Like people, this is what you have to do. I, I, I'm, I'm so over people in our sport complaining about our sport and not willing to do anything about it. It's only going to get better through our own work, through our own actions. And so the people that have invested, uh, uh, Will, Will Clay and Queen, and, and Queen having the, uh, the, uh, what, the Elevate commercials in there. Like all that stuff was dope. Like those are the things that have to continue to happen. And, you know, people, more people need to step up like that. It doesn't matter what, just step up and find a way to get yourself involved, find a way to get your thing out there whatever your thing is this is a place to do it you're not going to see the coaches collab commercial on the super bowl sponsorship right like that's that's not happening this is a place where you can get that stuff out <laughs> okay so step you up got that kind of bank yet <laughs> like, was, oh, I, I applaud everybody that put up some dollars to get their brand get their name get their product out 
on national television like that. Great job. Well, and I'll say this from the outside looking in and from the inside looking out for the coaches club part, I'll say knowing that we were able to put our hat in the ring, it actually made me interested as to look at the other sponsors that I didn't recognize off tops. Yeah. Right. Like I looked up what Zenny was about. I knew Zenny was glasses, but I didn't know exactly why, what made them special. Right. And so I paused every once in a while and I Googled what this was, what this was. And the, the, the great part about it being within our sport was that a lot of it was recognizable off tops. There was only a few that weren't right. Like BK has been pushing her uh, app and the services that she's starting to provide. And so it wasn't a random, just uh, vertical banner. Like I, I understood what that was when it, the camera would pan and whatnot. And so that was, I'll say that was a very proud moment for me as as someone who put their hat in the ring, but to see all the banners, everybody who just threw it, their, their time and their effort and, and their desire, the passion to make one, the meat bigger than it already was, uh, but the sport and the event bigger than it already was on its own. So, yeah. Um, I, I, I'm gonna bring, stay on this question for a second because we know that Paul already had in the past a few ATL meets. I'm not gonna say they were duds, but they weren't as hyped as this indoor series was. Do you think that looks differently now or going forward, let's call it in the 21 outdoor season with the traction that the indoor season had or indoor series? I, I think, and again, the, the pandemic has been awful 500,000 people dead nobody is you know saying it's a good thing but it's not but when you look at it through the lens of our sport and what it's meant to our sport at the professional level if the pandemic didn't happen all these pros would be chasing races over in Europe right now and whether or not Paul was able to get it on or not get it on it wouldn't have been it wouldn't have happened the way it did. And so this is a moment that was fit, that needed to be filled and it was filled brilliantly. And now there is momentum behind, oh, we actually can do this this way. And unfortunately, the pandemic is still going to affect the outdoor US track schedule in massive, massive ways. And so that void is still there. And we know at least one entity, the ATL series, is ready to step up and fill that void. Doesn't mean that there couldn't be another one. Doesn't mean that person X or company X can't step up and put four more opportunities out here so our American athletes and those who train in the United States don't have to jump on planes and fly, fly all over the world and you know, scratch and claw for the eight lanes that are, that are in the Diamond League, maybe. You know what I mean? Like, so the more opportunities, the better. And it's, it's, a, it's an opportunity. Yeah. And I agree with Clyde. And I think that what you're going to see um, if he's able to do this again outdoors, you will see post collegians going because a lot of the campuses won't be able to host them like they have in the past. Right. So, so the, the post collegians should hope that he does do this again. So they have meets to go to with the same ease of what they went to the indoor meets. Right. Cause I mean, the, the stars are going to get their races. Yeah. Right. I mean, <laughs> Grant could pick up the phone or his agency crew could pick up the phone and tell people where he's going to run. But, but the other seven dudes that he just lit up, they need help. So, you know, that's the way the game is, unfortunately. Yeah. So that's I think fast. the answer to your question is that there will definitely be a place for that, especially this outdoor season. Yeah. And, and I, I think, you know, Paul said a lot when we had him on and I, and I was, I was elated by his, uh, his candor. But the thing that he said that, that resonated with me the, the most was how well received the sport of track and field is at ESPN right now. Mm -hmm. I thought that was very, very poignant. And given the success that these four meets happened indoors, like, look, Billionaires are billionaires for a reason, right? 
like they play the hot hand. So if, if we put on track meets and then people watch, well, let's put on a meet outdoors and see what happens. Let's put on a second one outdoor. Like, like, I think that's going to happen. And, and that's amazing. At the end of the day, like, look, t- take it from someone who has been, I- I'll say I am 10 times more famous and popular overseas than I've ever been in the United States. Man, that would be awesome if you could be on television in the United States and have people who know you, like, be able to not, like, have to, like, buy streaming services to try and figure out how to see your race at oh dark 30 you know with the six hour or nine hour or 12 hour time change right to just turn on the tv at two o'clock in the afternoon and be like oh look and and i just think that that is such a blessing and you know we can't this show is not going to thank paul doyle enough because we're huge track fans at the end of the day like we we all do what we do but at the end of the day these four tiles all love track and as track fans um we're we're fans of the atl and and anything he wants and anything we can do to help we're gonna do amen um let's turn the corner and, and have a little fun i need everybody to take inhale exhale what's the next world record to be broken either gender any event Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll jump in here. Um, I, I think that the, the, the two obvious ones that everybody's going to flock to would be the men's 400 hurdles and the women's 400 hurdles. And I, I'm more convinced that the women's 400 hurdles race might go down again. But I think that the next world record is going to be broken is going to be the men's triple jump. Oh. Yeah. Are, are we yeah, yeah, by yes, by CT, them? I said that. Are we getting a buy, <laughs> are we getting a buy who in that? Christian Taylor, I mean, come on. It's, it's like, okay. why, why are we, okay, you know, and I'm, gonna, and I'm gonna tell you why. Because I think Christian's on a mission and I think Will's on a mission. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you, you have to go, as, as my man, you know, Dude X just said with the hot hand. So Christian's a hot hand. But he's gonna have to jump far to beat Will this year. And I think it's gonna take a world record to beat him. Not, not to mention the young man who broke the indoor world record. I, I did mention him. <laughs> I like it. I like it. <laughs> I like it. I'm done. The man set a world record indoors and he didn't get a mention. I love it. All about, I, all about I, my game boys, man. And I understand. I do understand. Uh, would you like to go, Clyde, or would you like me to go? Well, I'll go. Um, I have two... So to to Lucius's point, I don't necessarily disagree that a lot of people are aiming at and rooting for the 400 hurdle world records to fall, either gender. Um, There are athletes, you know, more than one on both sides that that have a shot at those. But I think in both of those races, the men's and women's races, they're going to need each other on the track at the same time for that to happen. And since that's not likely to happen until much later in the year, I don't think the the question is, what's the next world record to fall? The two people to me that can break a world record in their events without any help are Ryan Krauser and Grant Holloway. So I'm going to go ahead and lean in and say that Grant will take down the world record in the men's 110 hurdles before Krauser gets a chance to do it in the men's shot put. I ain't saying in his opener or anything because I don't think his coach is dumb enough to let that happen. But it's going to happen, and Grant doesn't need anybody to push him to it, not that anybody could. So that's where I'm going. I'm, I'm going with Grant Holloway. I'm going I'm take Flamingo. I am not going to lie. I was very concerned that you were going to steal my answer. Uh, I appreciate the fact that you leaned in that way because (laughs) for most of the reasons that you mentioned and then the one that for some reason you seem to overlook, 
I definitely believe that the first world record to be broken outdoors is going to be Ryan Krauser's because I think the next time he has a track meet, it's probably going to happen because not only does he not need a person to push him to it, I think where he's at in training, just based on what he's been doing, and it's obvious, I'm not sure that he's going to even be excited when he breaks the world record. Because I think he's thrown further than it more than once in training. I think that's already happened. And and so I, you know, look, I, if I had Ryan Krause's phone number, I'd call him and find out when his meet, his first meet was going to be. And that's what I would put my money on. Because unlike all the other events, he can break a world record in the first meet or the second meet, i.e. just did it indoors. He can break a world record in the first meet and that not upset his training going forward um so I, i'm gonna go ahead and take the low-hanging fruit and 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 pick and pick ryan krauser but i will say this it's gonna be a race to to see who breaks a world record first i i do agree with that um i think those two particular people have the opportunity to do it the soonest and, and i want to make a comment about the 400 hurdle thing because i the men's 400 hurdles are not really that close like i 46 9 is not close to 46 7. I just want to put that out there. So when they run 46 80 low, I'll, and I'll, then, you know, I'll get a little more excited. But when they're 46 96, you know, all that stuff, don't get those are great times. That's not, that's two tenths of a second away from 46 78. That's a long way. Yeah. And then, I, 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 and you I, have I to take the falls until, and, I mean, they're not even two Americans. We're talking about Ryan, we're yeah. talking about Warholm. Yeah. They're not, they're probably not going to see each other head to head. Maybe, uh, no. maybe once or twice, maybe. Yeah. And, see, and, and that's that that points to, let, let's give a shout out to uh, the hurdle mechanic, Lawrence Johnson, and to Joanna Hayes, the brilliance of them to have their athletes ready at the championships, right? Mm -hmm. You know, they show up at the USA meet, they bang heads, the world record's gone. They show up at Worlds, they bang heads, the world record's gone. That was brilliance on both the coaches and the athletes' part. And the men haven't shown that ability to get that done. You know, they have it. Not saying that they won't. Don't be no one calling me. Hey, I didn't say that. I didn't say you wouldn't. I'm just saying you haven't yet. And well, you're still a long way away. <laughs> and I mean, look, look, the the women's foreign hurdles is, is really really interesting because yeah. at the end of the day, Sid's in new hands now. Sid is now with yeah. Bobby Kersey. So yeah, there's a whole nother wrench to get yeah. thrown into into that equation. And, and we know how that guy rolls. And so right. now, so now you got Bobby Kersey, and you got junior Bobby Kersey and Lawrence Johnson, right? They're the same guy. They're just, you know, there's a 20 year gap in age there. So yeah, maybe, yeah. I, it's, it's, that's going to be one phenomenal race when those two get on the track together. Got it. Yes. I like it. That was fun. Took off some of the seriousness, got a little serious, but took off some of the seriousness and got it away from it. So um, let's go ahead and just jump on a whole new lane now. Uh, we're going to segue into uh, rapid fire. Mr. Clyde. I'm in. <laughs> You're up, sir. <laughs> go, go for it. I'm ready. Hot seat, baby. Pew, pew. All right. You ready? Do you need a drink of water? You good? Got my, got, got my low calorie body on the hair. There you go. Electrolytes up. Electrolytes up. <laughs> All right. Bow ties. Are they pre tied? Or are you tying them? Oh, girl, these are these are strapped in. You ain't know it. It's not clip on, but just a little hook. The, this guy, the, this I guy. To, I don't know how to do all that. <laughs> um, are you wearing a? Do you wear a pullover or a zip up? What's your preference? Pullover. For sure. Erica Badu Absolutely. or Lauren Hill. Mm. Both, they're both talented. They're both crazy. <laughs> um, I think I'm gonna go with the height, the height of brilliance, <laughs> Lauren Hill. Word. Uh, Gatorade or Powerade? Gatorade. Powerade is trash, but <laughs> Gatorade zero. I'm a Gatorade zero guy. Uh, Got know. it. Brussels sprouts, smash or pass. Only depending on who's making them. <laughs> depending on who's making them, I love them. That's hilarious. Crispy, 
crispy with the, uh, you know, with some kind of, you know, uh, honey-ish glaze. Mm. Brilliant. Um, what color was your first pager? Ha, ah, black. <laughs> I'm getting to the colors. Black. Everybody had the, the glow in the darks and the see-through <laughs> black. I love it. Um, what's your favorite? Did that dude just say see-through? <laughs> it is. Oh, you I never seen a see-through pager? Yeah. Yeah. Seen I had a blue one and a clear one, yeah. Look, wow. it, it I apologize. So I never seen one. Before. It got so out of oh, hand, yeah. at least out west, it got so out of hand. People had, like, they could change their cases to match their outfits. It was stupid. Oh, yeah. yeah. Black. For sure. Black. Or when I you apologize. used to, when you used to change the clip, you used to change yeah. clips with people. <laughs> Black. Um, what is your favorite Tevin Campbell song? No, I don't rock with Tevin Campbell. No. What? The only Tevin Campbell song I ever liked is the one that everybody knew, which was Can We Talk? But I, I never really was into So that. then that's your favorite song? I mean, it's a good song, but I ain't... <laughs> there was no other. <laughs> yeah. I'm not I mean, a... I'm not, we're not saying it's your favorite song, but it's your favorite Tevin Campbell song. <laughs> favorite you, is... You have, to, you have to play along sometimes, Clyde. <laughs> favorite is hard to do, because, I mean, it was popular. It wasn't on my mixtape, you know... <laughs> Set record joint. I didn't have the Tevin Campbell. Okay, if somebody's got a gun to your head and you got to listen to Tevin Campbell, what song you listen to? Can we talk? There you okay, go. Okay, see, see how easy that was. <laughs> Next, <laughs> I love it. You have survived, sir. You have survived. Well, that was by far the easiest one you gave me. I and you know I, that song's gonna be playing in your head all night. It already. I'm singing it. Already. I know. Oh, I'm already I'm singing. Can we play it? You, can, you can hear it right now, can't you? I'm upset about it. I'm, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yes, it was easy. It, it's getting harder. It literally, I'm like trying so hard. I literally, when I'm driving, I'm making notes. Dude, this is how this is how you you avoid the hard in in, the, in this part of the segment. You go petty. <laughs> always easy. This guy. Find, it's always easy to find petty banter. Petty I questions. know. I try to be nice though. No, no, no. You go petty. <laughs> See, and see, you know why he's encouraging pettiness? Because he knows I'm up next week. That's why. Exactly why. <laughs> exactly why. Oh, my I goodness. I love it. Great. And, and next oh. week, we'll be, coming, we'll be coming off the backs of championship weekend. So it's the best time to go petty play. <laughs> All right. Hard in the paint. Hard in the paint. I hear you. I got it. Received. Um, so let's now take the time to say our heartbeat props to give our recognition, our gratitude, our graces to those who help us, who have helped us sit where we're sitting presently. Who would like to kick us off? I'll go first and mine is easy. And, and <laughs> uh, my heartbeat props uh, go out to Gavin Newsom, Joe Biden, and our federal and state leadership out here. California been taking a lot of hits you know, with the COVID thing, never really understood a lot of that. I think we've done a phenomenal job from the beginning, all things considered. And the vaccine effort that they have going on out here right now is amazing. Uh, our state alone has vaccinated over 7 million people. We're number six on the planet. And I so lucky enough to be one of those people just this week. So they, they got a whole FEMA operation going on at, at most of the, the major stadiums in the you know, in NorCal and SoCal, I was able to get mine down at the at the Raiders Stadium and open Alameda County Coliseum. You know, everybody get out there, do your part. And it was easy, in and out, 30, 45 minutes, no pain, feeling good. Got to do my second dose in a couple of weeks. So when you have the opportunity, get out there and do it. And I'm very, very proud of the job that, that our leadership out here is, is doing and how well that's being rolled out. So for everybody involved in that and all the all the FEMA uh, volunteers and the National Guard that's out there working and doing it right. Props to y'all, appreciate it. I actually saw today that they opened up some more spots up at the Coliseum. I'm sure by now they're gone, but oh, yeah, they actually no. opened up some spots today. Yeah, it, it's, it's great. I'll go, <laughs> I'll kill that silence. Um, I want to say thank you to those it's a two part. One, for Paul Doyle allowing smaller entities 
to sponsor races, have those sponsorship sh sponsorship spots. Um, a lot of the coaches collab members, some of the co coaches collab members, you know, were just as excited. I don't know, just excited as me, but we're excited to see our logo um, around the oval at the finish line. Um, when we got to sponsor the 800 meter race, we got that the verbal shout out as to that race being ours, the logo on the bib, it was all phenomenal. Um, I would imagine that the other sponsors as well were just as excited to see the contributions that go into it. So thank you to Paul for allowing us to do that first and foremost. Um, and then the, the second part is thank you to the members of Coaches Club and those who have continued to support and are still active in it. Um, you know, it, it's nothing about, or nothing more than about supporting track and field. And we have to have coaches who coach the sport so that the, the sport keeps alive thoroughly, not just on the asphalt running in some random races in our high tops. I don't know, like the old school ways, but um, we just gotta, we gotta keep pushing and keep supporting. And so um, thank you to the members out there who have let us do what we've done so far and continue to grow. And again, thank you to Paul. Um, I'll go next. So, um, oh, I got okay. I'll let you be the anchor man tonight. Um, I, I want to give up a, 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 my heartbeat props to a, a man that I um, consider one of my absolute best friends, one, absolutely one of the smartest people I know. I've had the opportunity to have an in-depth conversation with him last week, and it just quickly reminded me of, you know, how um, we, we've been friends now for close to 25, close to 25, 26 years since I became an assistant coach here at the University of Florida and evolve into the head coach. And some of the talks we've had in warm-up areas, on the phone, via email, via text message, anytime I get this guy on the phone, I, I walk away from that conversation feeling like that I got better. Um, he's a man with tremendous passion. Um, I absolutely miss him because um, he's not coaching right now, but I want to give my Harvey props to Mr. Vince Anderson. I, you know, jokingly call him Dr. Anderson. Um, again, you know, you, you'll, you'll, when you hear this, you'll probably be mad that I brought it up, but uh, yeah, I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, just thank you for the conversations. Thank you for the pushes. You know, thank you for the butt kickings you gave me when I was younger to help me get better. And most importantly, man, thank you for being my friend. I really appreciate it. Of course, I got to follow that. Um, <laughs> well played is what that well, is. It is, it is, you know, and that happens a lot on the show. Um, my, my heartbeat props goes to someone for once who I know watches the show. Um, this young man is almost certainly going to call me Friday at like 532 yelling and screaming at me for outing him on this show. And that's okay, because he does watch it when it comes out, um, has watched every single episode. Um, this young man is somebody I met. Uh, he was actually assigned to me, I guess, theoretically as, a, a, I don't know, go for one of those things at a, at a meet in Arkansas. Uh, and I, I, I took a liking to him, he, he to me, and, and we have a, uh, at this point, a, a mentor-mentee relationship, um, but he keeps me young. Uh, he keeps me on my toes. Uh, he challenges me to be more technologically savvy. <laughs> um, and, and I appreciate all that he is for that. Um, my heartbeat props go to one Mr. Stephen Payne. Uh, he was a former athlete at Arkansas, and um, he's now using his gigantic brain to make the world better. Um, he can, I think, still run like a 415 mile or some craziness and and he was like a seven foot high jumper so I think that that's pretty cool but at the end of the day uh real talk um I think as you get older it is your job to be motivated by by the youth and uh, I've at least done my part but he's done a great job of continually challenging me um to be better to uh to make you guys better as he puts it um, he, he always calls me and tells me what my job is, um, on this show because he loves this show. So, um, my heartbeat props go to, uh, my youthful, youthful inspiration one Mr. Stephen Payne. Awesome. Thanks for making us, 
making sure we're better. So. Uh, yeah, I don't know how well I do that, but I know that we, we have fun doing it. How about that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Man, we are closing in on a year. Woo. That's crazy. Not, what not, episode? Not, not, we're, we're, don't guess. we're 47? 47. Five weeks away. Five. Five weeks till Lucius's album drops. Hold on a second. I, I've been singing for like the last six weeks. I'm not singing. I sang tonight. Are you kidding me? I mean, you can keep saying you're not singing. Sir Lucius okay. is singing on the 52nd episode because he said he would. What? I said that? Yes, you did. God, it's on tape, I, sir. I, I got to learn to keep my mouth shut sometimes. <laughs> As a matter wow. of fact, you know what? You guys can start emailing uh, Big League Chew oh, with uh, song requests. <laughs> no, you cannot. <laughs> Back to the Twitter poll. Uh, Prince oh, and Luther really? Vandross. So now, okay, so since you, so now the Twitter twits are going to pick the song I'm going to sing. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, might, they might pick Can We Talk. You never know. Oh, no. I love it. They're so, going to pick A Door by Prince just so we can hear that That falsetto. will not come out of this <laughs> mouth. I can promise you. <laughs> so just to oh. acknowledge, we've had... Uh, a lot, not a lot of, we've had several comments and, you know, corrections and whatnot on our YouTube um, comment section, I guess, under our videos. So keep that up. We love seeing it. Um, I definitely make sure that the three other tiles see it if they don't see it already before I show it to them. Um, and the most exciting part is people are going back and watching old episodes and then commenting currently. So good stuff. Keep it up. Keep talking about it. Um, the 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 big correction we had from last week was is Jason Williams and White Chocolate. I think I called him something else. I don't remember. So thanks you, for the correction. You did call him an improper name in the moment. I now I remember you. Yeah, I was like, yes, that was yeah. What what right. did you call him? I don't remember. It, it, the it, wrong last name. Yeah, it was close. See, I, I didn't yeah. catch it. Jason Williams went to school in Florida, so I I would have heard you. I was I like, like great. Um, Jay, yeah. Jay Will was nasty. <laughs> so, I mean, I called him White Chocolate. I just couldn't remember his name. I tell you what, I can pick him out. Anyhow, um, thanks, gentlemen. It's been fun as always. Have a great weekend. Enjoy yourselves. Sir Lucius, do what the Gators do. It, it's it's going to be fun to be able to see the outcome. I don't know how fun for everybody else, but from the outside looking in to see what y'all do this weekend will be fun. Thank you for um, your well wishes, ma'am. Yes, 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 yes. Gentlemen, have a great, safe time, and we will see each other next week. Hey. Good night. When the lights come on, the road just get to running. When the lights come on, the opponent smash the plumbing. Heard you like it warm, hot knife the butter. Truth pin them hard, knock them off that rebuttal. Tsunami, tidal wave to your puddle. Tough love punch you in the arms, little brothers. Athletics double, I'll see if there's no others. Track the field's pace and we'll peel to go further. Hey, Wiley, Coyote, it's road runners. Feels like you know us, you've been with us the whole summer. If not for this quarantine, these four corners wouldn't be here, but we're here, so start learning. You gotta earn your stripes, gotta get your scars. Show you how to fight, but show us who you are. You lack experience, but still you wanna talk. And who is actually talking to your circle's kinda small. Heads prevail when the backbone's strong. Gotta keep it coming, no, won't last long. Pass a fail, then sell the sad song. And if you don't check yourself, then that's wrong. Just trying to give you the real that you asked for. So why you keep cutting us off to ask more? We put it in slow mode, but you fast forward. Athletics, devil, I'll see the task force.